In this video, I will show you how to use Slack and some of the commonly used features in this productivity application. I have made a previous video, what is Slack, where I gave you a brief introduction to this application. Slack is a messaging application which replaces traditional emails and team members working on projects, they can instantly send messages to other team members instead of sending emails. And this is considered a very productive and efficient way of working when compared to the haphazard method of emails. And this application has been recently purchased by a very big company called Salesforce, which paid billion of dollars for this application due to its importance. And in this video, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the commonly used features. After watching this video, you will be able to use Slack with confidence. We will also talk about some of the very useful shortcuts and some slash commands in Slack. So let's get started after a short break. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Tahir and if this is your first time, I would highly appreciate if you hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new video on this channel. Now, since this is part two, if you are absolute beginner, you should watch the first video where I have shown you how to install Slack. Once you have installed, you will see this user interface. On the left hand side, you can see this F and D. These are abbreviates of two workspaces. So basically these are two different teams. If you are an organization, you can have many teams working on various projects. So this team D is currently active. As you can see that I am in this area. And then we have this sidebar. And in this sidebar, there are many sections. One is this channels. And these are channels and channels are basically various projects on which your team members are working. So one project is usually a channel in Slack. In every channel, you add your team members who then can send messages to each other. But there are many customization and productivity settings in Slack, which you should understand. Otherwise, this application can be very distracting Imagine that you are working on something and you start getting messages from your team members. So in order to avoid that distraction, you must understand how Slack works. And this is the purpose of this video. On the right hand side, this is the area where you type messages and you can send message to any channel, meaning all the members in that channel. You can also send direct messaging to any particular team member. So there are various way of conversation and collaboration between team members. Or you can also use another functionality which is called threads. And we are going to explore all these features in this video. Another way of conversation is by making your channel private. And then you invite few people in that private channel and do a conversation. But once a channel is made private, it cannot be reversed. Then we have this direct messaging section and these are my team members. So first we will discuss various things about a channel, how to make a channel private, how to create a channel, how to add or remove someone and these kind of things. So to create a channel, if I hover over this channel area, I have this plus sign and I can click on that and then I can click on create a channel. And now I can give it a name, for example, test. I can write a brief description and I click create. And now I can add people to this channel. Let's say I start typing an email and I have this team member. I can click his name and I can add. Now this person will get a notification. We are going to talk about this in a minute. Now I am inside this newly created channel. And now if I click on this little arrow and then I click on this settings, I can delete this channel. I can change this to a private channel or I can archive this channel. If I click on about, this is the point where I can leave this channel. And in members area, I can remove someone if I want. So let's close this. Now, next important thing is about notifications. And custom notification settings are very important in order to avoid distractions. 
So let us see what notification settings we have and how to set DNB meaning do not disturb. Now admin can also set notification setting at workspace level and if your admin has set some settings your settings will be overridden by admin settings. But normally you have to tailor your notification settings in Slack according to your own requirements. So therefore this is very important that you understand this. Now I have created this channel for this video and I have put a few messages inside. On the left hand side this is my this profile from which I am making this video and this is another profile which I am using from my mobile phone. So I click on this profile name and then on the right hand side if I click on my name then I click on preferences. The first preference is about notifications because it is extremely important. Now by default this is set to all new messages but normally this is counterproductive and you want to set it to direct messages, mentions and keywords. Mentions are messages in which someone has mentioned you by using at, at sign as in your email you have at sign. If someone puts at sign and your name it means that that person wants you to read that message that is called mention. You can also follow certain keywords. You can tell Slack that when someone types this keyword and you put those keywords in this area then a notification should be sent to you. So you can select this setting here. You can also totally stop notifications by selecting nothing which is of course not very useful and because you can also follow threads and we will talk about threads in a minute you can check this as well that if you are following a thread you should get the notifications. Now this is very important if you want to get notifications only during a certain time period. Then you can select here every day, weekdays or you can do a custom setting and you can set a time that you want uh, to get notifications only within this time period on every day or on weekdays. And I'm getting this message because Slack could not send me the notification using Windows Action Center. So therefore the best approach is that you select in this area you select Slack's built-in notifications. But even if you don't Slack will automatically select this setting because there are two versions of Slack. One is browser based and one is that you can install an application as well. And you can also get email notifications for mentions and which you can set here. So this is the most important part of your Slack interface where you set your custom notifications. There are some other preferences. Uh, most of them are self-explanatory. For example, in themes area, you can choose any of the colors which you want. And one important setting is in advanced area which I want to highlight. Make sure that your download folder is what you actually want. So let us close this and now let's talk about some of the important shortcuts. So these are some of the shortcuts which I'm going to show you now. You can take a snapshot of video at this point and you can save this. Otherwise you can also find these shortcuts on Slack website. But I have collected some important for you. So let us see how it works. So if I press control comma, I will get this preferences area, which I have already explained. Now if I press control shift and Y, I get this status area where I can set my status. For example, in a meeting, commuting to the office, and there are some other settings. Now these settings have certain meanings. For example, if you are on vacations, and you have set your status to vacating, then all of your notifications will be turned off. And let me show you a quick way to turn off the notifications. For example, you want to quickly turn off your notifications. You click on this area and you will see here pause notifications and you can pause the notifications for 30 minutes or one hour or whatever time you want. So let's say I pause this to 30 minutes and now I click here again I will see this pause notifications on and when I hover over this area I can turn this off. So if I turn this off and now I click again now this pause notification turn on 
is not there so this is how you can pause your notifications and you can again turn them on so this is a quick way and i will show you another way when we talk about slash commands so the next shortcut is if you want to start a new message one way is that you start typing here and you can click on this send now and this message will be sent but if you want to start quickly you can also press control n and when you press control n now you have all the channel names and all the team members you can select any one of them if you want to send to a particular team member or a particular channel so you can select from here and then you can start typing the message if you want to escape just press escape twice and you will be back now if you want to upload a file when you are in message area press control u and then you can upload from your computer now as you can see that these workspaces have numbers this is number 1 this is number 2 if you want to switch the workspace you can simply press control and the number currently i am in number 2 if i press control 1 now my workspace has been switched to the first one and if i press control 2 now I am back to my second workspace. Now let's open a channel with few messages and now I am in this message as you can see that this blue rectangle is here. Now to move from one message to another I simply press my up arrow and I can move up and with down arrow I can move down. So this is how you can scroll messages. So these were some of the shortcuts now these are some of the slash commands which are also very useful so let me show you how these works you can take a screenshot of these as well if you wish so if i want to send a message to any channel i can type slash msg and then i type hash sign and it will show me all the channels and now i can select any channel and then i can type my message just like that and send it now my message is sent to this channel and if i want to archive my current channel i can type slash archive and it will archive the channel if i want to send a direct message to any of my team members i simply type slash dm space at and it will show me all my team members i can select the one which i want to send message and then i type my message and send now and if i type slash status press enter i can set my status quickly it will show me all the options and i can select any of these let's say in a meeting and i click save similarly to remove someone i can type slash remove or also slash kick and then add sign and and then it will show me the name of the team members and i can remove any team member from this channel and now let's go back to this uh, channel so another important thing which i forgot to mention is that how to start a thread because thread is another uh, conversation area to do that for example this is uh, my colleague's message and i want to start a thread by replying this message so what i can do is on the right hand side i have this uh, icon reply in thread if i click on that a new thread will be created and in this area i can reply to my colleague whatever i want and now this thread will be here and i can select these threads by clicking on this thread if i click on this thread i will see all the threads which i have created in this channel and if i click on this mentions now i will see all the messages where someone has mentioned me and this is uh, for example one of that messages i can see that at my name this person is mentioning me so i have to read this message now these are various sections which can be set by clicking on this more if i click on more option and then click on preferences or you can open these preferences by using the shortcut control comma and in this area you can select which section you want to be on this side bar for example saved items if i check this as you can see that saved items will also appear in this area so normally we have this mention and reactions because this is an important section to have in this area for quick access so these are some of the commonly used features in slack and i'm hoping that now you will be able to get started with slack
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and see you next time.